Well, joining me in the studio is Lee Jones, who's an international relations researcher with particular expertise in the Asia Pacific region. Lee, very warm welcome to the program. So, what interests you about what they'll be discussing this week? Well, in terms of the agenda, then the main thing is probably going to be the South China Sea, which is a sovereignty dispute between China and a number of Southeast Asian states. Uh, the Americans have involved themselves in that uh, from a freedom of navigation perspective. The Japanese are also involved because they have a similar dispute with China in the East China Sea. So these issues are likely to be on the agenda and they're quite sensitive, particularly from the Chinese perspective. So ASEAN was set up to promote stability. Does it do that? Does it achieve that? Well, it was set up to promote a kind of domestic stability, uh, stability of authoritarian capitalist regimes. And outside of ASEAN, actually those regimes engaged in destabilisation against their neighbours. After the Cold War, uh, ASEAN has become a sort of diplomatic hub. So it's linking together the Southeast Asian states with Northeast Asia and with the major powers. And it doesn't do a great deal. It's fairly weak. Um, the major powers can't really agree amongst themselves. And so ASEAN plays this kind of coordinating diplomatic hub role. And it's, the bottom line is that the fact that it exists is better than it doesn't exist. Uh, George always better than World War, as they say. So it contributes to, well, it's part of the G20, but it doesn't contribute to it. Explain that for me. So the G20 is another talk shop. Nobody's quite sure what the G20 is for either, apart from giving emerging powers a sense that they're at the table, if you like. And ASEAN gets asked along. Uh, the, the rotating chair of ASEAN gets asked along to the G20. Indonesia is also a member uh, of the G20 in its own right, and Singapore sometimes attends too. But it, it doesn't, the G20 itself doesn't do a great deal, and then ASEAN does not speak with the united voice. So those three different countries attending, they'll have three different national positions. There's very little coordination. What, what's West, the West relationship with ASEAN? The West relationship with ASEAN has been strained at times, particularly around issues of human rights and democracy in the 1990s and early 2000s. So there's a lot of conflict with ASEAN over Myanmar in particular. But gradually over time, some countries have become more democratic and the West has also frankly lowered its standards. So the United States uh, is pivoting back to Asia to try and contain China. So it doesn't want to put too much pressure on the Southeast Asian governments. Makes sense. Lee Jones, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.